Hey, hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Davidson Hang podcast. I'm excited to introduce to you Dee Defada, who is a is a inspirational and positivity coach. And um, so, so I know you're the founder of A Dose of Positivity. Uh, so we're going to talk about your book. And um, I also read on your profile that you've you've had uh, 49 years of life and 20 seven years living with MS um, and that you've been working in the insurance industry for a while. Uh, and you do a lot, you do private and group coaching. Uh, you also do educational programs, uh, speaking engagements, and you help people redefine their circumstances so that they can break through their barriers and achieve boundless potential. And you also teach fundamental strategies necessary for people to free themselves from limiting beliefs of the past and gain the confidence and courage to get realigned with their purpose so that they can redesign their path forward. Oh, that sounds even better coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> You're so nice. <laughs> so I, I wanted to start off by reading um, just like um, from on your Amazon page, which is like, isn't that such a cool feeling to just yes. search yourself on Amazon and see you pop up on the results? Like, it's I still a, can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. Um, and congratulations. I saw that you're number one in bestsellers in health and spirituality, and then also number one in uh, inner child and personal transformation, and number two in, in personal transformation and spirituality, which Ooh, is not bad. I mean, that's awesome. I'll take it, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to start off by reading um, a bit. So it says, so you said, uh, what does it take to foster a grateful heart, to find a sense of peace, and to seek balance in the chaos? In the midst of all the challenges and trials life can throw at you, it can be hard to slow down and take that vital beat, the one that lets you exhale to reflect, to refocus. Enter the positivity method. In this lovely day-to-day -day book, author D. The Fada makes it easy. Simple thoughts and ways of framing your outlook are offered in daily bite-sized chunks. Just open to the page and read, pause, reflect, and breathe. Then move on with your day, empowered to respond to whatever life throws at you. I feel relaxed already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I love it. Um, clearly, you know, you have have some some adversity in your life, right? Yes. Um, and it's always inspiring to see because I do think not a lot of us. Um, I think the pandemic has helped us kind of like have a little glimpse of like just taking things for granted, mm -hmm. you know, but you had that even prior to the pandemic, right? Because of what yeah. you've gone through because of uh, MS, right? Yeah, MS has been a long journey. <laughs> 27 years is a long time. And yeah. uh, I, was, I was grateful, you know, I, I was definitely grateful because the neurologist told me in the very beginning, it was either an inoperable brain tumor or multiple sclerosis. I'm like, okay, I'm good. Thank you. Bye. Mm. I'll take this. I don't know what it is, but I'll take it. Yeah. So yeah, it was, I was okay with it. Not even knowing what it was, but I wasn't okay with it. You know, mm. I mean, it was the day before my 22nd birthday. That was not the present I was looking for. You know, yeah. it wasn't expected. It wasn't anticipated. And it definitely was not wanted. <laughs> mm. So I was a, I was a go-getter. I, you couldn't stop me. I was on the run all the time and I was an overachiever and I was stressed out. And I was a perfectionist and I just wanted to be mm. a people pleaser. And I'm like, yes. And all of a sudden I was stopped. It's like, oh crap, what do I do now? And it took me a long time to get the message. I didn't quite get it. You know how people have that like aha moment, like, okay, I'm stopped in my tracks. I really need to think about this. What was I doing? before I was diagnosed and how can I move forward? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I, I, I'm, I was born a stubborn person. People call it resilient. I am resilient, but I'm also stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> it took me years to get the message. I'm like, mm. oh, gotcha. Just glad I caught on when I did because I did not want to be stopped in another way. <laughs> that's, that's funny. I've never heard anyone say uh stuff resilience is stubbornness but yeah I would say I'm, I'm both right like <laughs> yeah. my, I would I think my wife would would agree that you know I can be quite uh stubborn you know 
You know, I mean, you can definitely spin stubborn to the positive and be like, yeah, I'm resilient because I am resilient. I mean, right. that's a positive version of stubborn, but I can also be stubborn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, that's a good uh, acknowledging. I think once we acknowledge something, we can be free from it instead of pretend like it doesn't exist. I have been doing that all of 2020, all of 2020 for me. And I finally figured out what it was. I owned it. I owned Hmm. the good, the bad, and the ugly. I allowed myself to feel it, even though I didn't want to. I forgave it and I released it. I'm like, oh, thank you. So, Hmm. but it's never a one and done. It's a constant, Hmm. you know, it's just like evolution. It's just like transformation. It's just like living. It's not a one and done. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point. I think some of us think like, oh, I'm I'm done with this. Like, it will never phase me again. But things come up, like people get triggered, right? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, every day it, it's a process, right? I mean, I think every day gets a little bit easier, right? But it never truly grows that way 100%. No, and actually I've learned to befriend that stuff too. I'm like, you know what? Okay, what are you trying to tell me? Obviously you're here for a reason. What story are you trying to tell me? I'm not gonna listen to the negative stories. What lesson are you trying to teach me? Hmm. So I've learned to um, not send it away altogether not completely and totally like stuff it in a box or release it, but I've allowed it a voice. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, you can come into my life. It's okay. I get that. Just tell me why, you know, why are you here? And I lean Mm -hmm. into that and I reflect and I'm like, oh, okay. This is because of this emotion or what happened here. And and I haven't Mm -hmm. truly released that yet. Like I feel tight. Why do I feel tight? (laughs) Mm So. Yeah. yeah, I like I like what you said about like being curious about it and mm-hmm. then giving it a voice. There's a at least there's some uh, a way to dealing with it instead of um, letting it consume us, right? Definitely. So that that's really powerful. Wow. Yeah, and it's not just our stories and what triggers us, but it's every part and piece of our body has a voice, and we don't mm. even realize it. I didn't realize it. You know, I mean, think about it. When you push yourself too hard and your back hurts, why does your back hurt? Because you pushed yourself too hard. But do you ever yeah. ask your back, why are you hurting me right now? What do you want mm. from me? Or when you get a headache, do you ever ask your head, why do you hurt right now? What are you trying to tell me? Mm. No, because we think that we have all the answers up here and we don't. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so you're very in tune with your, your body now, right? Like you said, yes. because maybe in the past you weren't, as uh, aware of like why your back may be hurting. And mm-hmm. so you're, so you think that because you're such a workaholic and because you were such a go-getter, you think that it actually affected your physical back. Oh, definitely. I mean, I would push through everything. There was no hmm. resting, relaxing. Um, there were no revelations to be found because I never shut up long enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hmm. I never actually asked the question, why are you bothering me? And listened for the answer. I just power through and powering through does not help, you know, but at the time I didn't love myself enough to give myself the self-care that I needed. You know, Mm -hmm. I was all about, you know, bringing smiles to everybody else and making everybody Mm -hmm. else feel good and being a people pleaser. And Mm -hmm. I was all about them. Like I had always learned to, um, you know, treat other people as you want to be treated. And I treated people great. I treated myself like crap. Hmm. I'm like, wow, it took a long time for me to find the love for myself. Hmm. I really had to go digging for like, why, why does this not exist for you? What is your issue? Why can't you love yourself right now? Hmm. And there were a lot of underlying, you know, limiting beliefs and self doubts and fears and worries that I had to work through. And I did. And I'm proud of myself because had I not done that, this book never would have been born. Hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting because I'm sure others have always loved you, right? Like your friends, your family, your coworkers, yeah. but it, it, it starts from within, right? So Definitely. others could love us, but we won't be able to receive it. And I know that's one of your first quotes um, yeah. in January. And uh, yeah, so that, so w- like, I guess like, when do you think was that, was there like a single catalyst or was it just continually over time? When, when was the time I stopped loving myself or when was the time I started loving myself? Oh, I was asking starting, but we could talk about stop too. I mean, (laughs) mean, that's a really deep topic. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, when did I start loving myself? It's really funny. I think I started loving myself in 2020, in August of 2020, wow. when I was doing all my inner work and trying to figure out why am I here? What is my purpose? Like I've, I've been a perspective and positivity coach, but I couldn't understand what the universe was trying to tell me. I'm like, what do you want for me? I just, I couldn't understand. I had this major block and I finally got it. I'm like, oh, you want me to go within and, and love myself? Mm. Ah, because <laughs> mm. I was, I was always there. I was always consistent. I was showing up every day on Facebook and, and posting mm. and being there for other people and answering their questions. And I was never there for me. I was never there. I never put my authenticity out there because I didn't even know who I was. Mm. I really had to go through the, the past, but not wallow in it, not, you know, bury myself in it, just ask the why questions and things that used mm. to trigger me where my shoulders would go up and I'd be like, oh, why did I do that? It's mm. like, no, I have to be okay with this, you know, and that taught me this. It was a mm. whole thing on forgiveness. So wow. when you read Transformation 2020 and the chapter that I wrote on forgiveness, mm. my letter of forgiveness, mm. it'll take you a whole different place. <laughs> mm because I managed to transform everything from what I thought it was to the lesson and blessing it actually was and what I've learned from it and been able to move past. I'm like, hmm. oh, that's what that was about. So there was wow. one day in particular when I, I lost it. I, it was an ugly, crying, snotty, like surrender festival that I was right in front of my husband at the time. And he looked at me like, wow. He goes, we've been together for almost 24 years and I've never seen a side of you. He goes, thank you for finally sharing. Mm. I knew it was in you the whole time. You didn't know it was in yourself. I'm like, wow. Mm. And from that moment forward, I started posting a very authentic stories, like my own personal stories on Facebook. Mm. And people were like, oh my gosh. And I think that by sharing my authenticity, it gave them permission mm. to be themselves and go through their own transformation journey. So yeah, a lot of healing. <laughs> wow. It's it's interesting how our partners always see, right, see it, but it takes time. Like sometimes, like I guess, like you said, our resilience slash stubbornness <laughs> is like, you know, because my, my wife's always like, yeah, I've been telling you this like the last yeah. five years and uh -huh. then I had to hear it from someone else. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it took almost 24 years, Davidson. Almost 24 years with my husband. He's like, duh, you've been this way the whole time. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 hard, right? When it comes from your your partner, it's hard yeah. to to be like take it at face value, or mm -hmm. I don't know. It, there's just a lot of resistance, right? Like, oh, that's a good word. <laughs> there's a lot of resistance in our lives, period. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And the more you resist, always ask yourself, why, why am I resisting this? Because mm. chances are you're resisting it because you're this close to the truth. You're so mm. close to the truth. It's right there, but you can't see it because you're blocked. Right. So, yep. Huh. And through that too. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's funny. I think August, 2020 was also when I started loving myself too. I awesome. think. Cause I think it's, it was like far enough into the pandemic where I had so much time to myself. So, or with myself that I was like, I better learn to love myself or else I'm going to, or else it's not <laughs> going to go, you know, cause I would distract myself prior. Like you said, yep. being of service, like helping volunteering, like you said, posting positive quotes every day and stuff like that. And then, and then people saw like people that really knew me was like, dude, like you got to take some time to just relax and chill out. Like, you don't have to be positive all the time. Like, it's like, I know you're having a bad week. Like you don't have to pretend like it's a great week, you know? And then I was like, what do you mean? Like, I'm fine. And they're like, no, you're not like, I can tell, you know? <laughs> so they're like, you're being fake because like, it's okay to have a bad day once in a while, you know? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's, good. That's actually, it's funny that you said that because that was one of my biggest fears, putting this book out there, your daily dose of positivity. I'm like, oh my God. I said, I don't always have a good day. I said, what happens now when people see me and they're like, you're supposed to be Miss Positivity. I'm like, <laughs> listen, I'm going to be real authentic. Today is not a good yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm all about, you know, and that's the whole thing that your daily dose of positivity is not about rainbows and unicorns. It's about authenticity and vulnerability and being you. You know, who are you? What do you want out of life? Really, it's time to think about that. You know, not who you think you should be, not mm -hmm. who other people want you to be, not, you know, what you think you should be doing with your life. There's so much should. It's like, no more should. Mm -hmm. No more should. Just be. Be in the moment. Mm -hmm. Be you. Be vulnerable. Be authentic. There's so much mm -hmm. to be said for that. Yeah, I, I mean, you're clearly someone who has done a lot of introspective work, right? It's not always easy. It's not always the most fun. But I think eventually we will, we all have to, you know, we all should um, take a, a deeper look, right? Or else we'll wake up one day and, and be like, Oh, my God, I'm not even happy at this job or this relationship or even with myself. So until we find out, you know, what makes us tick and be really curious about that. I think it's hard to truly, uh, it, it's hard to not get phased by other people's suggestions, mm -hmm. whether it's parents or your spouse or your kids, like it's hard not to get influenced by what our culture tells us or what society or your neighborhood, right? It's like, oh, you know, everyone is getting married at this time or like, oh, I'm this age, I should, I should have a kid by now. But, you know, it's like, well, what do you actually want? No. Exactly. Well, think about the stuff that you learned growing up. Think about what you were conditioned to believe. Like for me, it was like, you had to work hard. You had to work hard all the time. And if you weren't working hard, you weren't doing enough. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, no pain, no gain. Really? There doesn't have to be pain. It doesn't yeah. have to be pain. It's like all these things that we learned are limiting. They're limiting us. Mm. And they're not even ours. They're not even our beliefs. We just inherited yeah. them from our parents. And one of the biggest things that I try to do is I try to help people heal their ideals. And what I mean by that is all the old conditioning that you grew up with, who has, you know, made you who you are today, but trying to look at that through a different lens and be like, where did this come from? Mm. Like, yes, you believe this, but why? You know, where did you, who did you learn this from? Is mm -hmm. that really serving you? Is that something that you believe? Or is that something mm -hmm. that you were taught to believe because somebody else believes it? Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of healing, a lot of healing. That, that definitely resonates with me. I would say some of the disempowering beliefs that I believed a lot, like you said, was like, um, be, I guess like a lot of immigrant cultures, like they're mm -hmm. like, well, you, you have to work harder than everyone else. Like, or else like, you, you know, but then, I think, well, when you give yourself space to grow and learn and just meditate or just be by yourself, that's when the most creativity happens, right? I'm sure that's how the inspiration with the book happened because you gave yourself space to just just feel instead of like think and planning. And I'm sure you, there were moments of flow state where you're just like crushing it in terms of writing and just, just putting it, you know, trusting your intuition, right? Yeah, well, this book, it's funny that you brought that up because this book was started in March of 2019 with a different publisher with a different everything oh. and uh I had created all these quotes and I'm like okay I'm just gonna do like 30 quotes and there I didn't know how many I had at the time but I'm like yes I want to make an impact and I sent all these quotes to this publisher and she came back to me and she goes you know she goes this is this is great she goes we can do it as is she goes but she goes maybe you should add some insight you know like how did you come up with these quotes because people are going to want to know more and I'm like okay mm. So, you know, I went back to the drawing board and I started writing all my stories and my insight, whatever, and mm. sent it to her. And she goes, well, this is great, but, you know, maybe we should add in some questions so that people can, like, ask themselves and go deeper. I'm like, oh, my God. So I started writing these questions and I sent them to her. And then she's like, yeah, we can do this. But I'm like, that's it. I'm closing the book on the book. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a full binder of everything that I wrote and I just closed it. And I'm like, we're done. This is not the time. I know this is not the time. I'm not feeling huh. it anymore. I'm just done. I'm frustrated. And when I'm frustrated, things don't work. Mm. So, um, and I'm really proud of myself for closing a book on the book mm. back in March of 2019, because I wasn't ready yet. Mm. It was not the divine timing. I have allowed the universe, God, spirit, whatever you want to call it to guide me on this journey. I allowed this higher power to tell me when it was the right time to quit my job, 
which was February 14th, 2020. I quit my full-time job of 17 years. Wow. I allowed the universe spirit to tell me, you know, when to write my book and who to, you know, coach with the whole nine yards. Like now it's not huh. all about me, you know, whereas it used to be all about me making the decisions for myself. What do I want? Where do I want to be? Hmm. I'm like, okay, what's your plan for me? <laughs> Show hmm. the way. And that has really, really, really helped. Wow, that sounds like I would call that like extreme acceptance or like yeah. radical acceptance. It's definitely yeah. radical acceptance. It, yeah. it truly is because now I'm accepting that it's not all about me. My world is not a bubble. I do not exist in a bubble. I exist, I am part of a bigger plan mm. and I need to follow direction. I need, mm. and by following direction, I don't need my mom and dad going, do this, do that, do this, do this. <laughs> I mean, I need to get quiet and ask myself, what is my next step? And then I need to mm -hmm. shut up and listen. So a lot of people ask the question, you know, God, what do you want for me? Oh, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But they never, they're not quiet enough to get the answers. Huh. So it really does take practice to get quiet and just listen and pay attention to signs and synchronicities and different things mm -hmm. that you may see and that come to you. And it's like, Oh, mm -hmm. like even watching a football game. I see numbers on the football game. I'm like, oh, I know what that number means. And my husband's like, D, it's a score. I'm like, it doesn't matter. 10, 10, 10, 10 means something to me. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think I used to be pretty worked up about sports too. Um, and <laughs> then eventually I realized I was like, is this serving? Is this adding to my life? Like getting this worked up? it would, it would like, it would affect my weeks. So like it would affect my Mondays. Like I would just be in a crappy mood for like all of Sunday. Like if we lost, I'd be like, Oh, it <laughs> sucks. Life sucks. Life's unfair. You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and then I think the one year where now it's like, I just like, accept. I'm just like, I, I just had like a very spiritual connected for whatever mm -hmm. reason. And then that was a year we won the Super Bowl. Wow. And it was weird because it was like some like really early in the season, I saw something click and I was like, it's like, whoa, like they're really gelling. Like you can tell like the love for each other that they had. Like it was just like something I haven't seen before. And I was like, yeah. I think we're going to win this year. You awesome. know? Yeah. I love those moments. They're super special. Yeah. Yeah. When you can see past what everybody else sees, you know, when you can see into the bigger picture, it's like a glimpse of something. It's like, ooh this is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I definitely feel like we have a lot of similarities. I feel like we can write a book about forgiveness. Like together. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Maybe that, that would be a cool project. <laughs> I would love to teach a whole course on forgiveness and just get people to surrender their agenda. Uh, you know, it's like, it's huh. not all about you. You know, and as soon as you realize that it's not all about you and that you're here to serve others, but you're here to serve others in finding your true self, it's mm. like, oh, that's deep. So mm. it, it kind of, it takes you to a whole different level. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I never thought that I would ever like, like meeting Elizabeth was so fortuitous, right? Because what happened was I only did, I was only... I, I did like the mentorship program for only a day wow. and then that's where I met uh, Liz right for that yeah. for like that one weekend and then we connected and you know we, we, we haven't really like stayed in touch like that much you know and then I just saw her post on Facebook I was like sure why not for the great cause <laughs> and here we are today and you yeah. know like we caught like if, if it wasn't for that one day like that yeah. one yes I would have never met her you know uh -huh. It's yeah. funny how you said that one yes, because when you finally say yes to yourself, you say yes to the universe, you know, it, so when you say yes to one thing, you're saying yes to yourself and yes to the universe all at the same time. And you don't even realize it. Yeah. Like, wow. So, and that was in my chapter on forgiveness. It's yeah. like in this one moment, I said yes to myself or no, I said yes to this course. And then saying yes to this course, I said yes to myself and to, you know, the universe. I'm like, wow. Ooh, it <laughs> gives me chills just thinking about it. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 all we don't often think about like because I, I think a lot of us 
um, anything that's different or strange or something that's outside mm -hmm. our norm, you know, we're, we're so quick to say, no, 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 like that's not for me or, or no, I would never, you know, yeah. but I think when we start being open and like you said, once we start noticing the thing that we are afraid of the most, like the thing that scares us the most, yes. that's when the most life-changing uh, choices really do impact us in a positive way. Definitely. The magic lies outside of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So your little bubble does not have what you want in it at all. Mm. You know, yeah, it's a safe place and it feels great, but it gets incredibly uncomfortable eventually. Like the magic is mm. outside you. But it's funny yeah. when I say outside, I don't mean to confuse that with, with outside, outside. Do you know what I mean? And I, mm. I don't mean the material world. Mm. I mean, it's outside you in, in the bigger spiritual picture. You know, um, it's not in the clothes, it's not in the cars, it's not in the mm -hmm. jobs, it's not all about that. But you you definitely have to stretch your imagination mm -hmm. in order to invite in more opportunities and possibilities. You know, mm -hmm. you gotta open, it's not even your five senses, it's past your five senses. You know, when you finally mm -hmm. open your eyes, your ears, your your mind to experiencing new and different things. I mean, even mother nature, like I started taking pictures of the sun and the moon and this and that. I'm like, where did this come from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so true. It's I'm I'm very lucky where I just moved recently moved. My wife and I just moved into this place that um, we when we just purchased our first home and it's right in front of a lake, right? Wow, nice. And um, you know, like there's moments where I can just stare into like the the snow, like snowy oh. lake, and just feel very like blissful, right? But I would say 90% of the time I'm too busy, like on client calls or whatever it is that I don't appreciate it. But when I do take that five to 10 minutes to just stare at the geese or just look at the, the woods behind it. And like, I just feel so happy. And so, yeah. like you said, so connected. Exactly. See, connected. That's it. It's all about being connected. You're connected to, you're connected to something so much bigger than you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't feel that connection because they don't take time to feel the connection. They don't even know where to look for the connection. Mm. So yeah, it's there. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I, I think we, we could definitely collaborate on a forgiveness project. So I'll definitely reach out to you to see, <laughs> you know, we can be, they definitely like brainstorm about it. Cause I think that that's something, um, I think for forgiving like ourselves, I think when we forgive others, like it's actually for ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. But I think some okay. people, most people think it is like, well, it's for the other person. Mm -hmm. That's like, no, it's, it's really for yourself. Yeah. I think that's the key that I didn't realize, you know? No, it's, and growing up, I remember my mom so many times said, say you're sorry to your brother, say you're sorry to your sister. Uh -huh. say, I'm like, oh my God. But I never realized that, you know, that was, I was always worried about somebody else never worried about me I never said sorry to me mm. it's like oh yeah mm. so that was that was some deep work I did in 2020 forgiving myself mm. for my limiting beliefs for my self-doubts for the fears for the worries mm. for all kinds of stuff that I've been dragging with me through life mm. and it's amazing when you finally do forgive yourself you almost cut the cord and all the baggage falls away and you're like whoa mm. I'm liberated where did this come from huh. yeah, yeah you set yourself free it's, it's amazing Mm. Mm -hmm. that's that's a good point I think in the last since the pandemic I think I've averaged an hour more of sleep mm -hmm. than I normally would because like you said I was just on the I was a typical Manhattaner right like running from place to place like trying to catch the train like if I didn't I'm like I'll take a taxi and then just like oh why was there traffic just cursing <laughs> life and then you know even if I was like one minute late to a client meeting I would be like I'd be so hard on myself I'd be like Davidson, you're such a failure. You have no integrity. What's wrong with you? It was like the worst. Wow. And then, you know, since the pandemic, I'm like, whoa, like just giving myself space to sleep. Yeah. And then not having to wake up at 5 30 every day. It's like, yes. it feels great. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, just so you know, I, I listened to everything that you said about what you used to tell yourself in Manhattan. Uh -huh. And I wrote about this. I think I wrote about this in my, my daily dose of positivity. Um, it, this is so important. If you get nothing else from this conversation, get this. What you think you create and what you speak, you affirm. Yeah. And it's like, huh? 
when I finally learned that, I'm like, oh, oh I need to change my world. <laughs> I need to change my world. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how I would bash myself. I would say things mm-hmm. like that to myself. I'm a failure. I'm not enough. I can't believe I screwed that up. What were you thinking? You know, you can't walk. You have that mess. Oh my God, no more. No more. Mm-hmm. You will never again hear me affirm that I have a disease. Hell no. I'll tell you I was diagnosed with it 27 years ago. Mm. And I, then I will tell you that I have redefined it mm. as modified swagger and motivational spitfire. And oh, I will I also it. tell you that I'm healing. <laughs> and I'm not stuff. even saying I'm healing anymore. Now I just tell people I'm healed. And they're mm. like, but you're walking with a walker. I'm like, yeah, but I'm healed. On a different level, wow. I'm healed. And I will get there. I know I'll get there because I'm putting out to the universe that I'm healed. Wow. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I there's that's so yeah I love that that that's that's amazing that's such a huge takeaway yeah it's just a whole different shift and that's what your daily dose of positivity is all about it's Mm. about shifting the way you think now and just being open to a different perspective wow yeah yeah I don't I don't think there's nothing else we could say I think that's like the ultimate lesson right there (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much, Dee. I really, I want to acknowledge you for just your, um, your authenticity and just like you doing the work, right? It's, it certainly shows um, just your ability to just be with anything that the world gives you. Um, not only make lemonade, but be able to, to have like one of the best stands in, in the world, right? Like world, world famous lemonade. Um, so <laughs> I really, really, I'm so glad we crossed paths and, you know, I'd like to thank um, Liz and, and Dr. Dr. Davia and, you know, I'm so glad that, that the universe connected us and oh, me too. Um, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful book. Um, I, I love like yesterday's event was so touching and really opened up my heart and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that, um, you know, we, we, we share so many similar interests and can't wait to see what else you create um, and excited to support you all the way. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me on the program, Davidson. You are such a special person and you have such a beautiful spirit. I'm just so grateful that you found your way to your authenticity because you shine so bright. Aw, thank you, Dee. Yeah, keep sharing your light with others. (laughs) Well, I'll I'll, I'll link to your... all your what your your book your website your amazon all that good stuff and if anyone is if anyone's curious definitely check out her book it's it's inspiring uh the quotes are great and uh you can it, it'll, it'll help all of us with our daily practice right because it's it's a yes. it's a low commitment it's not like we're asking a lot you know just reading just 10 to 30 seconds every day with the quote you know yes so thank you d have thank a great you. And congratulations once again for being number one at number one in so many categories and excited to see you continue to inspire and um, transform the lives of everyone else around you. Thank you so much. It's a wonderful place to be. And I'm truly grateful to have been chosen for this. Mm.